All right, I guess uh, we should be getting started. <laughs> so welcome, everyone. Uh, this is the last session during this conference. Um, but I'll try to make sure that it is not the least. So my name is Roman Sfoszowski, and uh, I'm head of um, cloud R&D at GrapeUp. And today, uh, I will give one more testimony um, about how Cloud Foundry allowed one of our customers to get back on the right track, on the right path, in the wilderness of software delivery. The software is eating the world. We have heard that um, many, many times. And we know that companies need to change. We know they need to adapt to the pace of a changing world. And eventually, every company needs to become software driven to be able to not to be excluded from that world. Uh, they need to become software driven to be able to still play a role in their markets, in their industries, to be able to compete with their disruptors. So what they need is the ability to deliver software products at a speed expected by their customers so that the customer can get what they want uh, and when they want before actually they leave and go to the competitor. And I think this sentence is actually the, the shortest definition of the DevOps philosophy that um, uh, uh, should drive the digital transformation of an organization. We know that disruptors are ever, everywhere in, in multiple industries, in media, telco, finance, banking, um, automotive, insurance, and so on. So they move fast, and enterprises, on the other hand side, they need those, this, this velocity of a startup. They need elasticity of a startup to be able to compete with them. But can an IT company be disrupted? A software company, can it be disrupted? And today, uh, I will tell you a story about an IT company, a software company, that had to change, an old IT company, with a history, with over half a century of history. For many, many years, uh, they have been a leader in their industry. They've been building multiple products, visionary products. They were leading the industry and other were their followers. And one of their very successful products was a CPQ solution. Uh, they have sold multiple companies around the world. But even though they were a leader, somehow on their way to, um, to building great products, they have missed the cloud moment. They have missed the moment of when they need to introduce certain changes in order to be able to compete with others. And their competition has already migrated to cloud, whereas they have not, and they were left behind. So that was their challenge. They lack the knowledge about how to do that. And this um, lack of cloud readiness really diminished their leader position. So when they engaged us, they knew they had to do that. They knew they had to go cloud. Uh, but the challenge was, well, first of all, how to do that, and also how to do that quickly, because all the others has already done that. Um, they had customers requesting certain features they could not uh, respond to quickly enough. Uh, and they had to act quickly. So of course, they, they tried internally. They did some POCs. They, did, um, uh, um, they tried Azure Cloud. They do a lot of uh, internal trials. But all that was not enough for them to really get to the next level and then um, make a big step forward. And in all those internal trials, they also seem to miss one important thing, that to transform, because they really had to transform, is not just about adopting cloud. It's not just about the technology. To be able to truly benefit from the cloud, you really need to change your mode of operations first. And to transform means a lot more than just the technology. They had to learn. They had to learn a lot. They had to change their mindset. They had to set up a new working environment. They had to um, modernize the infrastructure. So this is the part where the technology comes in. 
but they also had to implement and change their methodology and way, way they work, the way they delivered software. And eventually, the combination of all those elements allowed them to deliver this competitive product that they were able to um, compete with against their um, other, other vendors, other competitors. And we have helped them to go through all those steps. And let me give you some further insights on, on how we do that, how we did that. So we started from the basics. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, first of all, we're talking the very same language, that we understand certain concepts in the equal way, uh, because it's difficult to explain certain things if we do not understand certain terms the same way. It's like trying to explain a virtual machine to someone who doesn't know what an operating system is, what a computer is. It's quite difficult. So we wanted to get a common baseline on understanding objectives, what are the goals, but also what is DevOps, what it brings with it, with it um, what is needed to be able to implement this, this approach, what is cloud native, and many, many things around that. So what we did, it's actually we, we created, we prepared um, an intensive crash course, sort of a workshop, two weeks workshop, uh, with a customer team. And we have explained all those things. We, we discussed all those, those things, DevOps, Agile methodologies, XP, um, continuous integration, continuous delivery, just giving them um, an overview of, overview, of course, because, well, it was not just a complete training after two weeks, so that they understand those concepts, and we have just laid down a, um, a baseline, right, that uh, we could build uh, further on. But one of the important elements that we have done during this workshop was also defining goals. So what are your goals as an organization? What do you really want to achieve? And they said, well, we want to become cloud-first company. We want to get back this position of a leader in our industry. Uh, we want to have a competitive product, which that will allow us to, to regain that leader position. We want to be able to use a SaaS model. We want to be agile. We want to improve our velocity when it comes to releasing software, to delivering software, delivering changes to our customers. And we want to be able to react faster to what's happening on the market, the, to, to respond quickly to uh, all those requests we are hearing from the market. Another thing we have defined jointly were, OK, but are you aware of certain risks that are on the way? Because it's very good that you know what you want to do, but there are definitely certain obstacles on the way. So you want to learn? Great. Uh, but be aware that this will be difficult. So you cannot lose the will to learn because it will not be weeks. It won't be months, right? It will take you a longer uh, time, a longer period of time to be able to really implement those changes. Old habits, waterfallish style of working, this is a great risk, right? Because again, you will not be able to change the whole organization at once. You will start at one place, but be aware that there is a risk of the waterfall of old habits just flooding your, your new uh, um, spark that you're trying to ignite. Silos, of course, uh, same, same thing. And lack of empowerment, because this spark has to have a power to be able to really grow into a bigger flame and then uh, spread, um, spread around the whole organization. So we have also discussed those risks and made them, made them aware that it won't be that simple. Uh, one more thing we have done, we have formed, defined, so what can be the transformation team? What can be this, uh, how, how this spark, this initial spark can look like? We have actually created or defined two teams, uh, created jointly from uh, our engineers, our representatives, from GrapeUp and uh, representatives from, from the customer. So platform team, uh, were that, which was uh, um, designed or um, thought of to be working on the platform part. And of course, the product team focusing on developing this new version of their um, flagship product. So 
the second part was actually the technology, building the platform as a baseline, the foundation for the product. And like I said before, and, and that's what we made aware, uh, the customer aware of, you cannot just base your transformation on the technology, but of course it is a very crucial part. It is the essential element because this is the enabler. It's like in a race, right, where when you have a great car, but you do not have all the rest around that, like mechanics, the, the team, um, the garage, uh, correct preparations, communications that you can, uh, the driver can communicate with the team and so on, you won't be able to win the race. But on the other hand side, if you don't have the car, you cannot even start the race. So technology is the essential uh, element, the technology is essential part here. And the customer needed to build the technology, needed to build a new infrastructure for the new SaaS model they wanted to follow. Again, we have went through, uh, let's say, introductory session with them, trying to define goals. So what you want to, your platform to do, of course, needs to be scalable, needs to be reliable, needs to be secure. Uh, we want to be, we, we don't want vendor lock-in, so we want to be uh, infrastructure independent. We want it to be automated as much as possible when it makes sense, use infrastructure as code, use continuous operations, continuous deployment, and so on. Of course, many of those, those things were, easy, uh, were new to them, so it was not easy to, uh, um, to implement that. Yet, there were, these were the goals they wanted to achieve. And when it comes to technology, this is actually quite complex, especially in the cloud-native landscape, because how to choose the right tools? There is a dozillions of tools out there. And how to choose, how to pick the right ones, how to make sure that your car is really prepared for the race. This landscape is huge, it's, it's, it's big. You probably know that one, right? And it's actually quite old because it says version 2.0, I think it's like a few months old. <laughs> right now it's even more there. And uh, uh, actually this, this compilation shows only the most popular technologies out there, not all of them. So again, they were just scratching their heads and, well, what, how, how, how can you handle that? How we can navigate this landscape? What tool should we pick? Again, this is where we were able to help them and narrow down this set of tools to um, a collection of tools and technologies they should use to build, to achieve those goals we have defined in the very beginning. We have also prepared a concept of their platform, how it should look like. And it's no brainer here because this is something that probably a lot of companies, a lot of teams have seen a lot. We have version control, we have continuous integration, eventually continuous deployment pipeline. We have a platform where we deploy applications. We have some automation layer that provisions infrastructure, handles the deployments. We have telemetry. We have uh, backing data services that applications can connect to. So it is not really a rocket science, I would say, but for that company, it was difficult, right? Because they had to change from the old world where this was not common uh, to a new world where this is common. So how did we do that? Um, we have went through a Mm, platform dojo um, phase with them and dojo format means that we have built the thing together with them using um, XP, using agile XP delivery process, um, using pair programming where our engineers um, were working together with their engineers building the very platform concept using those technologies we have uh, we have selected, and we have did it in two parts. So first part, four weeks, uh, we were uh, setting up the very basic uh, installation of Cloud Foundry, all the tools around that, uh, basic implementation of, of um, uh, concourse pipelines, making sure that we have the skeleton, let's say. Uh, and the second part, uh, which lasted uh, eight weeks, that was further productionizing the, the whole setup, making sure that it's um, secured, hardened, uh, prepared for um, larger scale, let's say. But 
in both phases, the major goal was to teach the customer's team as much as possible to transfer this knowledge. That's why we, we have chosen to, um, to use per programming, right? Because this is a very effective way of transferring knowledge from the one that has the knowledge to the one that doesn't have the knowledge. And it's really on the job training. So we are doing things together and uh, not just uh, theorizing right, on, on certain things, but, but doing that in practice. And as a result of that, uh, we have converted this concept of a platform into the actual implementation of the platform. Uh, we had a part we called the fortress, uh, which was the operational, um, centralized operational part that was used to actually deploy environments, multiple environments where each environment reflected uh, one stage in the software delivery lifecycle. Uh, at the moment, we, they, they have um, two environments, dev environment and test environment. In each one, they have Cloud Foundry set up, managed by Bosch, together with uh, concourse used to deploy applications uh, to the Cloud Foundry platform. They have a set of backing services uh, deployed also with Bosch next to it. Uh, and all that is sitting on top of Azure Cloud. Uh, the decision about choosing the infrastructure provider was actually um, not our recommendation. Uh, it was more of a business decision because, um, well, they were previously a .NET shop. Well, they still are a .NET shop in, in a large part, not uh, entirely, but in a large part. And uh, their product is actually um, quite tightly integrated with a, a Microsoft CRM solution. So it was quite natural decision for them to use Azure for that uh, because they also wanted to leverage certain uh, Office 365 um, capabilities integrations. So that's why we have picked uh, eventually Azure to, to deploy the whole thing. And what were the outcomes of that part? Well, first of all, we have built a platform foundation. Uh, we, have we have teach them the new methodology to, to use, to work with, and we have planted some DevOps seeds. And you have to be aware that those were just 12 weeks, right? So uh, it was not enough time to really build a uh, fully production-ready setup, but that was not the goal. The goal here was for the platform team to understand those new technologies, to learn those new technologies, and to build a baseline they can further improve and work on. But of course, uh, this was just preparing the car for the race. And now the race is about the product because that was their goal, right? We have the old product. We need to bring it to the new world, to, um, to, to bring it to the next level, to the cloud version of that product. And again, the same exercise. So what are your goals regarding the product? We want it to be offered in a SaaS model we want it to be easy to sell, easy to use, easy to maintain. Perfect product. Uh, of course, zero downtime. Uh, we want it to be high quality. We want it to be secure because, well, it handles certain sensitive data from our customers. So all those things were very important to them. And again, these are not some, some very specific requirements, I would say, right? Because we could apply the same goals to almost every other product, software product out there. They, they should be secure, they should be uh, uh, of high quality, um, no maintenance windows and so on. But the difficult part was how to do that in a cloud world, because this is the world we do not know. And especially that we are coming from the old world where they had previous, they, their previous version of the product was um, deployed on-prem. Uh, it was based on a few monoliths built with um, ASP.NET, uh, integrated with MS SQL Server. They also had uh, um, some desktop.NET apps. So altogether, the implementation or deployment of that product with a new customer was always a nightmare because they had to go on site, set up the infrastructure, deploy the thing, um, deploy IS application server, deploy those applications there, um, make sure that uh, uh, it is integrated with the rest of the infrastructure, and so on. So 
what they were actually ending up with were multiple custom versions of the same product and maintenance of those custom implementations were quite difficult. And where they wanted to get to was, well, something quite, quite different, right? We want a SaaS model. We want to be able to deliver those changes to all customers at once. We want to be able to, to onboard a new customer. We want to just create a new tenant in our offering, right? Um, so they had to not only um, adopt new technologies, but also reorganize and refactor the way the product is built using microservices, using .NET Core, um, using some external um, services like Okta for authentication, uh, multiple um, database solutions depending on what microservices, what microservice um, needs what, uh, service discovery queues. They also wanted to split the front end part from the back end part uh, using Vue.js. And again, we have done that together with them in a um, few phases, in a few steps. First, the application dojo that um, where, where our engineers were again working in pairs, using XP with their engineers, building the foundations of the product, where the goal was um, to uh, learn how to use those cloud native technologies and build certain skeletons of the, of the application. Uh, once that was finished, uh, we have moved to the second phase where we uh, wanted to build a product demo for the conference um, they wanted to attend. And that was a huge success for them because uh, when they show the new version of their product during that conference, well, they have, they have seen a great interest from, from customers um, and uh, well, demand for, okay, so when can we try that? Where can we really start using that product? Uh, which led them to the last phase, building the MVP for the product. And this is actually the phase that we are still in. Um, it was planned for, for six months. We are still helping them um, to uh, finalize the MVP, and, and they wanted to uh, launch it soon. And what is important then throughout all those phases, again, we were um, trying to transfer as much knowledge about this new approach, this, those new technologies as possible to them so that eventually they are self-sufficient. Because that was also a, a goal of the whole engagement. Uh, we don't know how to do those things, so you guys from Grape can help us. But eventually, of course, we want to regain our leader position and be self-sufficient again. Uh, right now, uh, like I said, they are finalizing the MVP. Uh, soon they will be launching their, their very first version of the cloud uh, solution. But there were certain problems on the way. Uh, and as you can see here, all those problems or examples of problems are related to people. They're not really related to technology. The technology part is, can be always figured out. Uh, it's complex, of course, picking the right thing, setting it up, uh, and making sure it's work, it works. But eventually, it can be always done. Whereas the approach of people to change their mindset, change their approach, and uh, accepting those, those um, different ways of working, this is really tricky. So for instance, their engineers were not really um, happy about pairing, especially initially, when they did not see so what's, what's the value in that? How, how, why, why should we do that? But after some time, they really started to notice that, okay, so we are far more effective doing so. And it is, it is far better than just going to a training session, uh, listening for someone talking for three hours about, I don't know, Cloud Foundry or, or something else. Uh, and, it's, and it's way better to, to just do that together with that person. That, um, this waterfellish way of, of working, like I said, it was just a small spark within the organization. And around that, well, there are still old thinking, old ways of working. So uh, it was quite uh, um, dangerous. However, they really managed to overcome that as well. So they did not let those other elements, well, those other departments or teams to really flood the spark. And 
eventually, uh, the result for them was, yeah, they, they were cloud enabled. They have learned how to use those technologies, how to use those new methodologies. They have built a new infrastructure. Uh, they were able to enhance their delivery process. Right now, uh, they have um, two uh, uh, environments, the dev environment and the test, uh, and test environment. Uh, each one is uh, uh, running uh, three Diego cells. Uh, both test and dev environments are running in one AZ, but uh, for the uh, upcoming uh, production launch, they're creating a third environment where uh, there will be three um, uh, availability zones. Uh, in total, there is about 120 VMs, so it's not really a big setup, uh, but this is just the very first step for them. And they also have the infrastructure, they also have the um, capacity right now to be able to release much more frequently because they do have concourse pipelines, both for uh, managing the, the whole platform and also for deploying new versions of, of um, their applications. Uh, they are working using the new methodology, the XP approach, lean startup approach, where they are iteratively improving their product uh, and they are prepared to release every week after every iteration. Uh, of course, they are not in production yet, but they do have the infrastructure to do so. Right now, um, they have they they've been able to break down the initial monolith into um, microservices. Uh, they are running uh, 39 applications in total in all uh, both environments. So, they have also uh, uh, improved the way this, this whole product was organized. What are the next steps? Because the journey is not finished, the journey still continues. Well, they are very happy about what's happened with this particular software. They have seen a lot of value and a lot of uh, improvement in how they can deliver the software in a, cloud, uh, in, a, in a SaaS model and also in the cloud world. So they would like to scale it up and broaden that into broadcast that to um, to other teams in their organization. They're thinking about migrating um, another product of theirs uh, to also refactor that, to also migrate it to the cloud, to the Cloud Foundry platform, engage other teams so that they can really also benefit from this new way of working uh, and see the, the actual benefits and, and um, how they can improve their software delivery process. So, I would like to sum it up with, uh, by saying that it is essential to leverage technology to succeed in a cloud native journey, just like um, our customer did. But it is important to understand and remember that technology is just the enabler and not the most important element. And this is actually a very common mistake or approach um, that a lot of companies are um, are, are, are taking. They're focusing on a technology and they think, well, if I set up this Kubernetes cluster in a house and I start using containers, I'm good to go. Yeah, well, maybe to some extent, but it's not, not, not everything, right? If you really want to benefit from those technologies, you need to change a bit more. And this is the tricky part. And Another thing is that you should not focus just on that technology because it is the enabler for you to really build the business value. And you should focus on what creates this business value for your particular business. In their case, it was the product. They had to build a platform, they had to build the infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, to be able to build a new version of the product that eventually allowed them to uh, regain their leader position. And the company should always focus on what really creates this business value. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. If uh, there are any questions, I'd be happy to, to answer them.
So by the end of this, do you think 90% of the same people will still be there? 50% of the same people? Does that make sense? Because it, it, it's really hard when you're stuck in a mindset to be like, great, I'm going to move class now. So I would say that this company had a, over half a year of, uh, half a century of, of history. And uh, I think that they were, they just, they just were thinking, okay, we had this great heritage, right? We were leaders, we were always leaders, right? And they just, they just missed this point, this, this moment in time, right? Where this heritage was not enough, right? And uh, of course, they also needed some, um, let's say, uh, motivation or, or um, initiative from downwards, <laughs> right? That really allowed them to understand, okay, so maybe we should really do something. Uh, and actually in their, ca in their case, uh, I, I, I can say that they really did their homework because they managed to uh, spread the world, uh, spread the word themselves internally. They just lacked the, the knowledge how to do that, right? But they were aware about, okay, we have to change. And they were able to, to push that message up. And I think uh, that's why they were successful in that. Out of curiosity, what, what was the overall size of the organization that you guys were in? Like how many you know, engineers or like with the you know, enterprise uh, scale or small and medium? So, how many folks across the middle? Not just the spark part of it, but like where the flames got to spread to. Uh, so the, the, let's say, um, the part that we're working with uh, were around 20 to 30 people, right? That was the, the let's say, the core team that was uh, um, involved in the whole um, transformation or starting the, the transformation, trans transformation part. But of course, the whole organization is, is uh, way bigger. Um, so uh, um, it is not a 20K uh, uh, people organization, um, but... Uh, yeah, right now they, they still need to um, make the next step. So from those 20 people, they need to scale it up to, um, well, probably a few hundred. And just one more question on the staffing side. Just resource-wise, was it a highly tenured organization, like folks who had been there for you know, 15, 20 years, uh, or was it you know, kind of a, a blend with younger resources coming in, fresh skill sets? Yes, they were they were trying to do um, uh, to do the latter, so they also uh, uh, noticed that well, we have to make changes in many many places, so they were also um, uh, uh, when adopting those new ways of working, uh, they had to make certain moves internally, meaning that okay, if we see that that person is not really suitable, let's say. Uh, for for the new approach, for the new way of working, uh, unfortunately, we we they had to replace them as well. So these were difficult decisions. They always are, but uh, yeah, they did that as well. So they wanted to to pull in new um, uh, new talent, new new skills, uh, especially around those new technologies that they were not familiar with or not so comfortable with. Yeah, so uh, in the product team, uh, they had their product owner uh, plus their developers, software engineers. Uh, from our side, uh, we have added our software engineers plus um, an architect that helped them to, to design a new version of, of their product. Uh, and we started with that team. But eventually, um, as we moved on, we noticed that their product owner um, needs some help, especially when it comes to backlog management, to, to adopting all those techniques related to XP. So we added the PO coach uh, that helped them to, to really uh, better understand um, and to use those techniques uh, uh, more efficiently. And that's a role you have within your organization? Yes. Uh, in this, yeah, it, well, in this case, it was very helpful for them also to uh, um, to learn those those new uh, approaches on a PO level. Uh, yeah, but uh, 
we also seen many cases uh, with other customers that when they want to start leveraging Agile, there is somewhere this, this um, well, Agile coach or, or PO coach, different names, right? So someone that really oversees or supervises, do you use the process how you should be, right? All right, so if there are no more questions, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>